What's up, everybody? Welcome to Moxie Bets, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Today, we're talking NBA playoffs with our guest, Martin Weiss, of the Extra Points Podcast Network, the host of the Lemon Pepper Pod, and also uh, Fox Sports Radio. How are you doing today, Martin? Doing well. How are you, Katie? I am good. Did you happen to watch the Tom Brady roast last night? I did. I, I saw, I saw like, I don't know what I missed. I, I started, I turned it on and Ron Burgundy was was roasting yeah. seemingly everybody. <laughs> oh, I saw a little yeah, bit of so Randy missed- Mosses, but I saw from there on. Yeah. Okay. So, well, one, I started late. I started at like 11 o'clock because I was watching some weird true crime situation that I had to like finish and see the end of. Um, and then, so I started it a little bit later and then I ended up watching it until like 1 a.m. I didn't realize it was three hours long. Um, long but man, I mean, up. yeah, he, first of all, he took a lot of things on the chat. Giselle caught a lot of strays. Giselle caught a lot of strays, a lot of jujitsu jokes about her and, and her new boyfriend. And, uh, Yeah. The only thing that was interesting, and maybe if you tuned in a little bit later, um, I believe it was, I can't remember which comedian it was, but he made a comment about um, Robert Kraft getting the uh, massages. And that is the only time that Tom Brady stood up and he was like, cut that out. And uh, so I guess that's the only, that was the only person that was off limits. All right. Yes. That that, that was the only one that, that, and I mean, Kraft caught a few, I felt like, but that one, he, because at first I saw the tweet, like when they clicked yeah. it out and they said, we almost had a Will Smith situation. And I was like, they're exaggerating oh, yeah. a bit. Then I saw him get up. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. keep his name yeah. out your mouth. Right. Like, say what you want about my ex-wife. Say what you want about me and my kids and how I chose my career over my family and how my wife is now banging a jujitsu instructor. But don't say anything about Robert Kraft. I get it. He's an older man. And, you know, maybe there's some respect there. But I found that to be uh, interesting. I thought that Nikki Glaser, if you haven't watched it, uh, go back and watch her set. It was hysterical. And and she was the only female there. And she ended up getting a standing ovation. Um from the crowd. But y'all, if you haven't watched it yet, make sure uh, you tune in and watch that. And our our boss, uh, Peyton Manning, also was a surprise guest there um, at the end. Uh, and he, But then he dipped out and then Tom had quite a, quite a lot to say about Peyton. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's move on. Let's talk round two of the NBA playoffs. Uh, how about those Cavs, right? Rallied past the Magic 106 to 94 in game seven. I believe they had like an 18 point deficit at one time, 39 points yep. from Donovan Mitchell. Um, and it was, I believe it was their largest comeback since the league started play by play, which is amazing. Were you surprised? Because the Cavs started out that that series really lazy. I didn't I didn't think much of them. Uh, then they come back to rally, winning game seven, overcoming 18 points. What do you think of this Cavs team? Can they go far? Is this does the buck stop here? Because now they got the Celtics. Eh, no. Buck stop. <laughs> the buck is returned to the bank. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. survey says absolutely not. First off, yep. I was devastated, devastated. I mean, oh. heartbroken watching the Orlando Magic and just miss uh. shot after shot after shot. Franz Wagner, who is close to my heart as a Michigan, uh, you played Michigan basketball, I'm a Michigan alum. Mm. He picked the best time to have his worst game of his entire life. Like He's never yep. played that bad, ever. I- I'm willing to bet, ever. He has he gone one for what sixteen from the floor? It was really honestly remarkable. It felt bad for the guy down a certain moment. Yeah, but I, oh, I yeah. just I hate the way that this Cavs team tanked Game eighty two and was rewarded yep. by winning their first round yep. playoff series. Yep. it makes yep. it, it 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 irks me. It bothers me to my core because sports is about winning and trying hard, and tanking is just against what I believe in. And but the magic folded in that second half faster than J. Cole and a rat beef. I was just just very disappointed in the way it all went down. But two teams that have, I mean, to say one dimensional offenses is yeah. a, the exaggeration. They have one player who can score on either team. Yeah. And that's Donovan <laughs> Mitchell and Paolo Bancaro. And that's yep. pretty much how it played out. First of all, I didn't even know that you were a Michigan man, and now I see the blue rain um, behind you there. So c- congratulations on that. Uh, we'll we'll Thank talk about you. that. I guess closer Champions. to the 
national champions. And I think you're still going to be good coming here in, in the next season, but that's uh, neither here nor there. All right. So you talk about tanking and getting rewarded. Well, the good thing is, is now they have to go against uh, the number one seed in, in Boston. So these odds for the series are ridiculous. Celtics minus 1600 Cavs minus 900. Neither of us are, are, are playing that one. Um, how many games do you think the Cavs can actually win in this series? Maybe a half. Against swept? Oh. <laughs> Maybe a half a game. You, you're like, going Celtics no. in four. I will say Celtics in five because yeah. the thing about – but it's really truly all about Boston and the way that Boston plays. I don't like the way that Boston plays. I think that, you know, silly me, you know, the team – you know, you should go to the rim sometimes. You should – mid-range is okay, yeah. as we saw yes. in the Western Conference playoffs. And we'll, know we'll talk about that in a minute. But it's okay to shoot from the mid-range. The, the, those two points yeah. still count. Um, but Boston doesn't put enough pressure on the rim for me, meaning they don't they, they don't, they don't, they don't get to the free throw line enough. Eventually, mm -hmm. we're going to see – it happens all the time with these, these jump shooting teams, except for – the uh the Golden State Warriors a few different times and uh, you know they had the best shooter of all time and then Clay Thompson as well as his running mate so you mm -hmm. know that maybe just maybe yeah. those are outliers but there's going to be a moment in time where Boston doesn't shoot well from three and that's the game that they're going to lose now it just depends on how often that happens I think against Cleveland it happens once yeah, I uh, agree with you. And look, history is not exactly on Cleveland's side here. Teams that are listed as minus 14 or higher in the second round to win a series um, are perfect 18 and 0 since 1990. So the Celtics obviously getting through here. Uh, both teams, though, uh, Martin could be missing their starters, uh, starting centers. Cleveland, Jarrett Allen missed game six and seven um, against Orlando with a rib contusion. He's listed as questionable ahead of game one. And then Porzingis, obviously likely to miss this entire round due to his calf injury. Whose um, injury do you think is going to have a bigger impact on their team? I think it'll be the Cleveland one because I think Boston will roll without Porzingis. I don't think they really need yeah. him in this series. And I'll say this. If they do need him in this series, that does not bode well for the future of the Boston Celtics in the playoffs. Yep, I couldn't agree with you more. So Celtics in five, you can find that at plus 170 um, over at Caesars Sportsbook. When we look at game one here, Celtics are laying 11, 11 points. Is this something where you're like, I'm laying the double digits. There's no way that the Cavs even come close to this. Or are you playing this a little different? No, I think I if I were to lay a side in this, it would be Celtics uh, minus the yeah. eleven. Uh, I tried to get cute last series, thinking that you know, you know, you know, Miami. I, no, 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 they they <laughs> summarily took care of business, and it took I a know. historic three point shooting outing for the one game that Miami did win. Now, the thing that concerns me the most is historically in this era of the Boston Celtics. I think this goes back. No, it goes back to the start of Joe Missoula. They're what are they now? Thirteen and thirteen at home in the postseason. Yeah. They were twelve and thirteen, and yeah. then beat Miami in Game yeah. Five. Uh, yeah, thirteen and thirteen at home in the postseason. And that's just straight up. Like that's just straight yeah. up. So like conventional logic would say bet Cleveland on the money line just every single game <laughs> so far in the series, yeah. even if it doesn't go just four or five, right? Because they have an opportunity right. to you know win, and you can come up on that on that plus money. But uh, I'm going to take the Celtics in eleven. I'm going to be boring. Well, here's the thing. too: it's the, the Celtics had such an incredible home record during the regular season. So then to flip that and just be, you know, 50, 50 in the postseason is crazy. I, I agree with you. I think that the, that the Boston Celtics could cover this 11 points and lay that I might, I might take the Cavs in the first half plus four. That's at minus one fifteen. Cause I feel like in all these situations, we talk about rust versus rest. Obviously Boston's coming into this match much more well-rested, right? Because they got rid of um, the heat in five games. And then we've had this Cleveland team that was in like a knockout drag down fight up to seven, having to come back. They may have the energy in the first half, but they're going to get tired and they're going to fall apart in the second half. So I could see them maybe holding on to Boston in this first half Cavs um, plus four. All right, moving on to the Thunder and the Mavericks. 
uh, here. This one is interesting because the Mavs really aren't kidding around. They just signed Jason Kidd to a contract extension the day before the series opener against the Thunder. The terms were not disclosed. This move makes another potential takes another potential candidate away from the Lakers. There's about nine people that are circling around uh, for that job. How impressed have you been with the Mavs, or is it just like this is what we expect the Mavs to be? I've been really impressed with the Mavs, and I think that this is a lesson that a team like the Lakers, for example, should learn. If you can have the opportunity to improve your team along the margins, especially midseason, you should probably take it. Because if I told you, Katie, if I told you in November that the Mavericks were going to trade, make a trade, and there's going to be somebody yeah. from Washington and somebody from Charlotte were going to be added to the Mavericks team and it was going to boost their ceiling, especially defensively, You'd be like, what are you talking yeah. about? There's nobody in Charlotte or Washington that even plays defense. <laughs> what defense is over there. No. So, but this is a thing, like, like because so much is about, the, in the NBA especially, it's about the big swings. It's about, uh, you know, who's going to do trading for Bradley Beal and Kevin Durant and so on and so forth. A lot of times, look, you still got to fill out the roster with five people on the court and at least three people that you trust to come off the bench. Improving your team along the, along the margins, it, may, it helped Derrick Jones. It helped uh, yep. guys like Josh Green who were getting, like, you know, too many minutes for their status. You yep. know what I'm saying? Now everybody's in the right spot. Kind of what happened with the Clippers. Kawhi gets hurt. Now all of a sudden Russ has got to go from playing 15 minutes to 25 minutes. You know, and then now James Harden goes from being a distributor to, you know, having to have to score. And we've seen you can't depend yep. on either one of those. But I'll say impressed with the Mavericks, even though I did think that the Clippers were kind of a letdown. The injuries didn't do much for them. They're and always a letdown. They're old and slow. Yeah. Yeah. They're old and slow and quiet can't stay healthy for anything. You could you just expect not to have him play a majority of the games um in the playoffs. Well, you you mentioned people like uh Luca, obviously. I mean, he's been incredible and Kyrie Irving has been incredible too. It's been years since we've seen Kyrie playing the type of ball that he's playing right now. In fact, this series um, does have two of the three MVP finalists in Luka and SGA. How do you think that they're going to be able to stop both Luka and Kyrie? Because I was looking at some stats, Martin. Luka is the third most points at 1,090 through the first 34 career playoff games in NBA history. He's behind only Wilt Chamberlain and Michael Jordan. And you look at someone like Kyrie Irving, he's averaging 20 points per game, or he did 20 points per game. He does in the second half of that first series. So what can the Thunder do to stop these guys? Uh, lock the doors in the locker room. Make sure they don't get to the court. <laughs> like, I, I don't, they won't be able to. Yeah. Like, they won't be able to. Because here's the thing. You got Lou Dort, who, if you remember, back in 2020, during the bubble, we were all sitting at home watching these games. All of a sudden, James Harden from Houston Rockets was just in the torture chamber by some guy named Lou Dort. Who the hell is Lou Dort? Well, now, four years later, he's established himself yep. as a legit 3 and D guy. Uh, and, but the, here's the thing. He's 6'4", all right? So can he guard Kyrie? Yep. No one can guard Kyrie. Right, no one can yeah. stay in front of him yeah. and guard him when he's really dedicated to trying to get his bucket. Just ask PJ Tucker how that goes. Right, fade away in the corner. Thank you very much. See you later. Enjoy vacation. Right. So, or on the flip side, Luca, who I know he's his numbers have been pretty good. His efficiency has been down, and just his eye, the eye test. He doesn't seem to me to be playing at the highest level that he has in the past. But okay. a lot of that has to. A lot of that has to do with the knee injury to me. Like, his knee is bothering him. Yeah. And I think that's why he's shooting so poorly from three. But even then, Lou Dort is 6'4". Luka Doncic is 6'7", closer to 6'8". So how would they be able to guard him? I imagine that they're going to try to, like, put Lou Dort on whoever's hot. But as Kyrie has shown this postseason, uh, through his career, but especially this postseason, he'll light you up for a 30-point half. And he's perfectly fine with not – being ball dominant at times when it doesn't actually fit the team, I think the Mavericks are really rolling at a good point. And all due respect to the New Orleans Pelicans, but I don't think the Oklahoma <laughs> City Thunder have really had their welcome to the playoff moment yet. No. No, I don't think so. And to to be fair, the Thunder are favored in this series, minus 125. Mavs plus 105. I kind of lean towards the Mavs um, coming out of, of this series, just based on what we've seen. But who do you think wins this series? I'm taking the Mavericks. I'm taking the Mavericks in six. Um, okay. 
But it's going to be a six that feels like seven. It's going to be a hard-fought series. I don't yeah. think Oklahoma to let, just lay down. But ultimately, between – Oklahoma City is, to me, a, to a player or two away from being a real contender. And that player would come in the, in the form of a big man. I think they – like, Chet played well against Jonas Valanciunas. Um, but with the rim running of Lively and Gafford as they're running through that, I know that Maxi Cleaver is going to miss this series. If Maxi Cleaver was going to play, I'd feel much better about Mavericks in six. But um, between Chet having to have the play that dual role and keeping those guys off of the boards, because the Clipper, I mean, the Clippers were formerly Lob City. Mavericks were the ones throwing the lobs, especially Kyrie from half court, mm-hmm. looking the wrong mm-hmm. way, right? So I'm expecting that those two guards will be dynamic and score. And uh, this, there's a little bit too much in the paint for uh, Oklahoma City to keep up with them, uh, Dallas, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So you're going to take him in six. I'll just take him plus 105 to get out of there at some point. We look at game one here. Um, Mavericks are the underdog. They're at plus 140 to take a money line, minus 165 if you want to lay that with the Thunder. The spread is three and a half, total 217. Now, Martin, Oklahoma City did have Dallas's number in the regular season. I believe they went three and run in their four matchups, but only one of those games had both a healthy Luka and Kyrie. Now, Luka isn't necessarily healthy, but I mean, he's putting up some crazy numbers. Do you take the Mavs here? Plus, you want to take the points? Plus three and a half? You want to take a money line? What do you think? I think it, it goes into a little bit of the kind of the rest versus rust that you were talking about earlier. Oklahoma City's been sitting yeah. at home for a long time. You know, what does yeah. a pro want? What does a pro need? Does the pro need to play? Yeah. <laughs> does the pro need to sit? Uh, yeah, I'm taking the, I'm taking the points commercial. with the Mavericks here, yeah, and I absolutely hate that commercial. I, I, I'm starting to dislike Oklahoma City more and more and more the more I see that commercial. I just don't, I just don't know. First of all, we can all tell that's the W in Westwood, right? That they're walking out of anyone who's lived in LA. You can tell what, um, sure. what, uh, what hotel they're walking. And yeah, it's just, it's just the lamest little jingle. Um, but yeah. All right. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we are looking at the games for tonight, including the Knicks and the Pacers. Don't go anywhere. Why should you bet with Caesar Sportsbook? Two words, Caesar's rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. Welcome back to Moxie Bets here with our guy, Mike Martin Weiss, um, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Moxie Bets here. All right, we've got two games tonight, Martin, on the schedule. The Knicks versus the Pacers. I didn't, I thought the Knicks were going to game seven. I did not think that they were going to pull off that win um, in Philadelphia. That was very surprising to me, but now they've got the Pacers. The Knicks are favored to win the series minus 265. If you like the Pacers here, they're at plus 215. Now the Pacers did win the regular series season scary, excuse me, against the Knicks two to one. Uh, Obviously the trade acquisition of Pascal Siakam was what changed um, a lot of these things? What do you what do you think of this series? Can are the do you think the Knicks get out of this? And in how many games? I do. I've had Knicks in six here. I was not impressed with the Indiana Pacers in the first round, and I think that if the calf injury gods had not struck the Milwaukee Bucks, we'd be looking at how does uh, Doc Rivers blow a three one lead in this series, right? Because I mean, and just honestly, we should just have a moment of silence for calf muscles in the NBA in general. It's been rough. It's been rough. I mean, it's between Kristaps, yeah. Giannis, Dame, just can everybody just hey stretch, drink some water, you know, like let's yeah. work these calves out. Eat some bananas. But yep, exactly. Eat some bananas. But no, I'm with the <laughs> Knicks here. The Pacers have not impressed me. They didn't impress me. I mean, there have been 15 instances in NBA history that both the I'm sorry that the top leading scorer both the, the here we go 15 instances in NBA history where the top two scorers were out and the team, the 14 of those were losses. The one that was a win was last time with Bobby. And then he ended up with Bobby Portis and Patrick Beverly doing wow. post game interviews. Like that's not like when, when the producers who, who put that TV, who are directing that game, that's not exactly what they were expecting to happen. I just, I'll just say that they probably do a little research. Wait, how many teams have Pat Bev been on again? All right. Anyway, no, so, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, and then honestly, I think that uh, if and it was James Capers was the, ref, the referee for both of these games where you know uh, Anthony Edwards got the technical foul last night. Well, if you fast forward or rewind rather the last week, 
James Capers had two technical fouls and ejected Bobby Portis in like the first six minutes of game four. And I wonder if he had not, mm-hmm. how that game would have mm-hmm. ended, right? Because the Bucks were kind of moving and grooving. I know it was obviously super early. And as we see the NBA, it's ebbs and flows. But a guy like Bobby Portis, whenever Giannis and them step out are out, generally steps up to, to add. I mean, all of his numbers go across the board. Any any Anybody who's betting props or anything in the NBA knows if Giannis doesn't play, take Bobby Portis over. Um, right. So I, the Pacers have not impressed me so far. And I think that they will not. Uh, who's supposed to? Okay, let me ask you this. Who on the Pacers is supposed to match the output that you would expect at this point out of Jalen Brunson? Nobody. I mean, you look at Jalen Brunson. For, he started a little bit slow in that last series, but I believe he had 39 plus points in each of the last final four games of that series. I don't see anybody on the Pacers that can match that. Uh, and I, I, I wonder who's going to stop him. Who's going to be able to slow Jalen Brunson down? I mean, the Pacers are very good at like keeping the pace up, um, but I don't, I don't think they've got really the shooters for this, and I don't know that they have the defense to be able to stop someone like uh like Brunson I mean I agree with you I think the Knicks get out of this in five I think they can get out of this one um in five not just in six now when you talk about player props obviously you said look when Giannis is out you know who to take is there anyone in this series that you're zeroing in on is it Brunson points do we think he's going to have the same kind of output that he had are you look like who who do we like in this series uh it's less fun than Brunson I'm taking Hartenstein under 10 and a half. First of all, there's only 10 and a half at Caesars. It's nine and a half everywhere else. So you get an okay, extra okay, point so by at Caesars. Yes. But the thing about Hartenstein, that. it felt like he could not miss in that. Everything he threw, all those lefty floaters he threw up were just bottom, yep. bottom, yep. bottom, bottom. But here's the deal. A lot of those were off Brunson screens, right? And let's be honest, they're not throwing the ball to Hartenstein in the post. They're all off of screen, screening roll, that type of deal. And Joel Embiid was just sagging and sagging further and further because, you know, hurt knee, whatever you want to say, he just was not pressing up on Facial paralysis just, with Bell's palsy. I mean, what wasn't he dealing with? <laughs> I did a – just real – I had done a, a radio hit. They had asked me, like, you know, picking that series, right? And I said, I wasn't too worried about the knee, but I was worried about whatever Joel – because he has the weirdest playoff injuries. I said, whatever Joel Embiid's new injury will be, that's the one I'm concerned about. I had I had never even heard of Bell's palsy before. <laughs> like, what is this? I thought it was like, what is what is this? Like, what is this faith uh, That's crazy. Literally, but it is crazy. Yeah. I had a friend that had Bell's palsy. So that's the only reason why I knew what it was. And yeah, it's like facial paralysis. You can't move your face, and you have to do all kinds of physical therapy and like. Um, I think they do uh, acupuncture and all these things to try to get your face to start working again. I can't imagine playing with Bell's palsy. And I can't imagine walking outside no. playing basketball. Yeah, Let alone uh, national television with a face right, that won't exactly. move. I know. It's insane. So, so uh, that, this is because I would have never thought that that would have been the injury. But as a result, as we just outlined, Joel Embiid has, let's just say, a lot of stuff going on. And it, oh challenging Josh, I mean, challenging uh, uh, Hartenstein on those little floaters yes. wasn't there. I think Miles yes. Turner – Get in his get in okay. his grill a little bit, and so I think we'll end up seeing him under ten and a half as long as he doesn't go to the free throw line too much. Okay, I love that. Lock that in now too before it it, it moves here, especially on Caesars at that ten and a half. Yeah, this line Knicks five and a half. The total is two seventeen, and I think I'm well. I'm not. I think I am going to take uh, Pacers under a um, hundred and five and a half of their team total, and it's kind of what we talked about earlier. Like, who's going to be scoring all of these points? Like, defense is going to be a key factor for the Knicks in this series. Uh, we certainly saw them do a pretty good job of that in the last series. The Pacers shot fifty. 50- 59% and 61% from the field in their two regular season games that they won. Uh, in their one loss at MSG, they shot just 45%. Um, percent, and that was before OG. He did not play in any of those three games. And obviously, I think he's a good matchup for Siakam. We saw Siakam go crazy on them in the regular season. I like that matchup. So I do think that it's going to be harder for um, these Pacers to score at Madison Square Garden. So I'll take them under their team total of 105 and a half. Um, what do you think of Knicks fans? I feel like they're kind of polarizing. 
I don't have I, I don't understand they talk about Knicks fans like like they're Cowboys fans. So I think they just want their team to be good. They haven't been good in forever. Yes. Like I don't yes. I don't have a big yes. a big issue or beef with it. Like I think what ends up happening is the people see like obviously New York like like California has a ton of people who will both move in and move out, right? So yep. like you meet these people yep. Who yep. have moved left New York and they become these unrepentant Knicks stands, right? They talk about how Melo was doing <laughs> this and that. And they remember like regular uh-huh. season uh-huh. games because uh-huh. there's nothing else to hang on to. Well, I think they on the aggregate that the Knicks fan is just I mean, they're just they're just more of them, right? There's just so many more yep. of them because there's yep. no team, all due respect to the Brooklyn Nets, that segments the fan base, right? Even in LA, you have yep. a little bit of like yep. there's some Clippers fans, a few of them, right? But not 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 in the grand scheme. But that's yeah. that's where it is with me. I, I don't hate the Knicks fans or anything like that. But I, I've been surprised to see the way that people talk about them. I don't get it. Yeah, they're they're a, they're a spirited bunch. And to your point too, I think because they haven't won in so long, they they win one playoff game and they've shut down Seventh Avenue, right? And and they're going crazy. And just the the New York mentality is just so fun. And to your point too, I feel like a lot of New York is split when it comes to football. There's Jets and Giants fans. When it comes to baseball, there's Yankees and Mets fans. But the Brooklyn Nets, it's from I live I've lived in New York, you know, a couple times now. Nobody's everyone's a, a Knicks fan, so that's kind of the one thing that really like unites the entire city. Everybody um, is a Knicks fan, and and I'm excited for them in this series. I think they get out in five, um, and I think they obviously win this first game. But I will take uh, the Pacers under their team total. All right, finally, Nuggets versus the Timberwolves. Now, uh, series odd nugget, Nuggets plus 105. They're actually dogs in this one. T-Wolves minus 125. The T-Wolves came out, and they won the first game. Were you surprised by that? I was not. I was not. I picked okay. Timberwolves in six before this started. Um, and I think so that you if think you – think that the Nuggets are getting bounced? I did. I do. I do. Okay. I think that okay. if you – now, this is going to sound dumb on its face. But if you take away the championship from the Denver Nuggets last year, like, and you take away this, the fact that they won it, right, and just kind of bake in, yeah. well, they have championship-level yeah. experience. And I'm not trying to take away from that, but each team yeah. is different, right? Like, each iteration, yeah. it's like your high school yearbook, right? Like, the vast majority of the people in your class will stay the same, but some people transfer in, some people transfer out, right? And I think that when you look at, I think Minnesota is the deeper team. I should say it like this. I think the only thing that Denver has over Minnesota is, well, the best player in the world and playoff experience, which are two really big things to have. But the guy who yep. built the Denver Nuggets, Tim Connolly, also is in the process. He's been the, the, the GM of the Timberwolves for the last few years. Everybody made fun of him, myself included, when they traded for four first-round picks for Rudy Gobert. And then, but, but with that, what it allows them to do now is they have three different people, like three different credible in terms of size and space that can guard Jokic. Now, guard Jokic, I should say, stay in front of Jokic, right? You know what I'm saying? Jokic is going to get hit. Like, that's that's inevitable. But you look at, like, the Lakers. They did a good job of limiting him in in the first game. I mean, he did not go crazy. But, I mean, limited. He still had, like, 30-something points. And, you know, but the (laughs) point, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you look at the numbers, you know, but, but but again, still, for to your point, two for nine from three. He shot 25 times. If you've watched Jokic play, you know he wants to shoot, like, at the most 20 times to get everybody else involved. That's, that's, That's his sweet spot. So, so with that, and allowing, if a guy like Carl Anthony Towns, Cannot commit dumb fouls, which, I mean, he picked up a foul literally in the first possible instance yeah. that you could on the yeah. opening tip. Like, you got to be kidding me, Carl. Do you know what I just went and said about you on podcast? Like, <laughs> stop it. Uh, but they have three credible people that can bang with Jokic at any moment in time. And I think that can mm-hmm. throw the nuggets off. And I think a lot of it has to do with Tim Connolly knowing I just built yep. Denver. How do I go and yep. beat Denver? Well, this is the way to do it. Right. Um, I think right. the Timberwolves are the deeper team, and I don't think that there's anybody on uh, on on anybody on Denver that can guard Anthony Edwards. Okay, fair. Um, I still think the Nuggets get out of this series. Speaking of, you're a Lakers fan, right? I feel like I remember that. Not really. No? I just live in LA. 
Oh, you just live in LA. All right. But the the one thing I will say about Denver fans is that like, yes, you guys won one, but like chillax on like you're the next dynasty. All right. I'm obviously I'm a Warriors fan, been there, done that. People who are Lakers fans kind of been there, done that. Like, yes, you've won one, but I feel like Denver is acting like they're the next dynasty um, in the NBA. Now, I, I still think that they get out of this series. I do think that um, I just don't know that you could keep Jokic like you said, going two for nine and those kind of things. I think he's going to get out. He's going to have a better game. Right now, the Nuggets are favored in this game too, minus five and a half. I think they were embarrassed in game one, and I think they come out swinging here. So I do, I do, I'm laying this five and a half with the Nuggets. Is this, a, you think they go down two and oh, or you think they get one back here? I think the Nuggets end up winning this game. Uh, and I think they'll cover as well. When you see, I mean, just the game script of it all lines up to where, or the, the series script, I should say. You know, we talk about game script and you think about how, how is this game going to play out? Well, generally, when top seeds go down in the first in the first game, they come out in game two and just curb stomp the opponent. I don't think Minnesota will do yeah. that. But I do – when we look at five and a half, that's two possessions in today's NBA, right? Well, I guess in, yeah. in all NBA since the trade that I – mean, since the three-point line invented. But – the point remains, like, you see six old runs in 35 <laughs> seconds, right? Uh, all it takes is back-to-back three-pointers made. So I, I like the I like the, I like the, uh, uh, the Nuggets here tonight, minus five and a half, mm-hmm. and then I like Minnesota to win both at home. All right, so you've got Minnesota winning in six. So now when we look at the NBA Finals, um, Celtics are the favorite, plus 110. I mean, they've gotten there, but they haven't really gotten over the hump. Then you got the Nuggets defending champs, plus 450. And then these Timberwolves, plus 500. So this remains. You think that the Timberwolves are getting out of this one. Do you think that the Timberwolves could win the whole dang thing? I do. I do think they can win the whole thing. Uh, again, because it's more about getting – I think whoever gets out of the West will win it. Right. And I think, honestly, the winner of this series, Denver and uh, uh, Minnesota, is going to be your eventual NBA champion because of the way that Boston mm-hmm. played. After a while, I just think yeah. if Boston had a little bit more diversity of shot selection, if Boston was more aggressive to the rim, like I, I would love to I would love to just be like, yes, I love Boston here because then, you know, I won't look like a, a jerk when this comes out, you know, months later and people are like, wow, this guy really hated on the Celtics. How would you handle the Celtics? That's right, we're the season team of all time. I don't know. Right, but yeah, yeah. the Warriors in 2017 were, the, oh, I've said this backwards. The 24 Timberwolves are the first Western Conference team since the 2017 Warriors who set out 5-0. and mm-hmm. 11 teams have done it since 1996. Of those 11 teams, all of them but two made the conference finals. And again, of those 11 teams, seven of them won the Western Conference. So, in, in generally, we're looking at, yeah. you think about teams that sort of sweep the first round of the playoffs, they're overwhelmingly going to be a one seed or a two seed. You know what I'm saying? They're mm-hmm. over, like pretty much overwhelming. Mm-hmm. This is a three seed here who started out 5-0, and oh, and I think it bodes well. And I think that, like, there's something to the idea. You saw the way that Minnesota came out game one. If they can keep that yeah. intensity – I yeah. think it's going to be huge for him, especially, too, again, with the calf strain. Jamal Murray hasn't wasn't playing great against the Lakers in general, despite having two uh, game ending uh, game winning shots. But that calf strain, I mean, apparently they were crying. He was crying in the background. You got to let me play coach. And Malone is like, I can't risk you. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, kind of a rocky moment there. He's like, I got to go out yeah. and get him. I got to fight. But. You know, that's all well and good for like one game, but dude, consistently over and over having to monitor the no. injuries. No. Yeah, I think it's going to be tough for Denver, especially if Murray's hobbled in any way. All right, so you're you're leaning Timberwolves plus 500 in this one. I think the Nuggets get out of this series, so I'm going to take them to win the whole thing because like you said, I don't know that anyone in the East is going to beat the Celtics, but when the Celtics get to the NBA Finals, I don't know what happens to them. But they, they're like the 49ers. They figure out a way. Uh, to fall apart at one point. They just can't seem to get it done in a best of seven. So I'll go Nuggets plus 450. All right, Martin, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, talk to us about your new radio show because you're live in Detroit, I believe, right? Yes, I will be doing a show that will be broadcast in Detroit. It will be quick uh, noon to three Eastern time. Okay. Nine to noon my okay. time, but that doesn't quite matter. Noon to three Eastern time. On 1270 AM, it'll also be uh, streaming on iHeartRadio and 
There'll be podcasts nice. of all of it. So just in case you're not, you know, locked in in Detroit radio, you can go ahead and stream it regardless. We'll do a mix of live. I mean, I'm doing a mix of local commentary and also some national mm-hmm. stuff. Right now, you got the Tigers playing. Just uh, gave up a heartbreaker to the Yankees in an empty stadium because it was raining. And uh, <laughs> but uh, former Tiger manager Brad Ausmus on that Yankees bench uh, in that in that dugout there. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll we'll be talking about the Tigers, the Lions, the Pistons, and the Red Wings as as it becomes relevant. But also, of course, yep. a ton on the NBA playoffs and the upcoming Lions season. Lions. Again, with another great draft. You know, last year everybody was talking about all the yes. all the dra- all the draft graders were like, "Oh, Lions get an F. How dare you take a running back? How dare you take a tight end? How dare you take an inside linebacker?" Well, you know what? All they did, you know, all of those guys did. They played and were impactful. And that's the key. That's the that's yeah. the thing about draft decay. That's what people miss yeah. about NFL draft. They talk about you know, oh, yep. you know, you can't take a running. Like, what you can't do, you can't miss on a running back in the first round. Yeah. You can't miss. Yeah on a slot corner. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you yeah. got to get guys that get up mm-hmm. there and play. Preach. You know, I love that you're doing uh, Detroit radio as well, because you were one of the people that really stood up for Detroit fans um, and the way that they travel. And you were just like, they're they're about their team and they love this team. And you gave them so much prop and credit for how well they traveled last season. So I love that you're in the dirty D now um, and, 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 and talking to them about. And I agree. I think the Lions are going to be great this year. I think the Bears are kind of sneaky. I think the Bears are going to be sneaky. Um, I really love uh, the draft that they have, and nobody is set up. No rookie quarterback has been set up the way that Caleb Williams is going to be set up in that division. I was high on the Bears last year. I think I was just a year too early, um, but certainly I, the Packers are better now, and the, and the Lions are are great. So the, the NFC you know, North is finally going to be a fun one to watch. I think the one thing that pe- I think people are penciling in the Green Bay Packers in a place there. I don't know if they should be. I think if the Cowboys no, had like maybe two or three linebackers, uh, then we would have been singing a different tune about Green Bay because that postseason performance, yeah. while impressive, I think was more about the Cowboys yeah. in Green Bay. And plus, too, Matt uh, Matt Lafleur just tore his pec muscle working out. What's what's this guy? What's this guy paying attention to? Is he drawing up <laughs> formations or is, or is he trying to get swole? You know what, what's what's going on here? What are we doing? Uh, he is very good looking, though. I will say he's one of my favorite coaches uh, in terms of his face card. But on that note, we're going to get out of here. Thank you for watching Moxie Bets. Obviously, don't forget to tune in with Martin on his new radio show, uh, iHeartRadio in Detroit. Also, you can catch him with the Extra Points Podcast Network and the Lemon Pepper Pod. I don't know if I ever asked you, by the way, why Lemon Pepper? Why is that your favorite? It was when we started this podcast many iterations ago, we started, we would bet back and forth lemon pepper wings, me and Rob Parker. And now the the, the name has remained, although the hosts have changed. Got it. But yeah, we would bet back and forth lemon pepper wings. I bet because this was back when uh, LeBron and the Lakers had the sons in the first round, the DeAndre Ayton, mm-hmm. Devin Booker, Monty Williams sons. And I was like, the Lakers are going to win. And Rob was like, I bet you six lemon pepper, they get swept. And, you know, neither one of us were right. But that's where it all started. Okay, I love that. That's actually a very good um, story. All right, we're going to get out of here. Make sure you tune in with our friend Martin Weiss. And uh, follow us on social if you haven't already, at MoxieBets. We'll see you next time.